Winston, America's best-selling, best-tasting filter cigarette. Winston tastes good like a cigarette should. The 1950s was characterized as a decade of consumerism as the prosperous post-war economy served as a hotbed for advertisers. Throughout the decade, advertising expenditures increased by over 460%, reaching unprecedented levels. So, by analyzing advertisements showcased in magazines like Esquire, Saturday Evening Post, Life, and Ladies Home Journal, one can get a sense for how idealized life was in the 1950s. The family was a center in many of the ads of the 1950s. Products were typically marketed in association with the suburban household, mirroring not necessarily what the American population experienced, but rather with the lifestyle that many desired. These ads represented stability, as the modern family, mother, father, son, and daughter, enjoyed the comforts and conveniences of their new home and car, with added leisure time together. This image appealed to the majority of the population who were struggling with the adjustment from a wartime society. After the war, women were encouraged to relinquish their work and return to the domestic roles of the home. Many families simply embraced the stereotype, leading to the baby boom, family cohesion, and mass migration to the suburbs where the family-centric lives could flourish. Advertisements would emphasize how easy and time-efficient their products were trying to reinforce the idea that motherly success could be purchased. Advertisements for food, appliances, beauty, and children's products were thus all directed at the female demographic. In the 1930s and 40s, smoking was the norm for both men and women in the United States. However, by the 1950s, there was a rising public anxiety about the health risks associated with cigarette smoking. To counter this worry, tobacco executives advertised cigarette smoking as safe, highlighting features like a filtered tip and even associating the brands with doctors. Companies also used politicians, cartoon characters, even Santa Claus in their ads in order to maintain their cool, approachable image. For the majority of the decade, transportation by train was the most common form of long-distance travel. By 1955, the world of commercial air travel began to grow as Americans were mesmerized by the developments and opportunities that accompanied this form of travel. Although flying was uncommon for the average citizen, jetting across the world was highly fashionable and in the latter end of the decade surpassed the train as the preferred method of travel. Marketers capitalized on this fad in order to sell anything from shoes to club memberships associating their products with the catchy name, the Jet Age. <laughs> 